I welcome you live on SVTV Africa. My name is DJ Nyam. If you just chance on our channel, subscribe and join us. Click on the subscribe button, drop your comment, share, invite your friends. SVTV Africa, the voice of the community. Today, I'm going to have a lovely chat with one sweet lady. Uh, I'm going to speak English. If you don't know, you laugh at my English. Trouble will come because me, technical man, I don't speak plenty English. You know what I'm saying? But I speak PG and local language. Chi, Ga, Krobo. Ada, Ewe, small. But um, before I, I start my interview, uh, let me thank my sponsors. Um, La Bianca Company Limited is located at uh, Tema. Fishing Harbour Road, uh, they are finest, number one, when it comes to fish and chicken. Don't go there. The number one cool store in Ghana. If you want to set up a business, you want to open a cool store, uh, joint or something, or you want to... You, you own a restaurant, bar, whatever. The prices are moderate. You go buy, you sell, you make money out of it. La Bianca Company Limited. You can call them their number on the screen for inquiries. You want to place order, you want direction and whatever you need. Just call them number on the screen. La Bianca Company, no size. Gildan Distributor in Ghana. You see the shirt I'm wearing? It's Gildan Distributor that brought it from USA to Ghana. Number one solid shirt in Ghana. T-shirts that when you wear, you can wash it so many times that you want. It will still be original as you bought it. Gildan Distributor, they are located at Adabraka. Wholesale price. If you want to do business with them, you can just call them. Their number on the screen. They, they are looking for agents across the whole region, Ghana. So call them and do business with them. You make more money. From this October to December, they are running promo for those who want to do print. Friends, old school reunion companies, uh, those who want to print souvenirs and all that. They are running free promo. So just call them and go there. They will do your printing for you. Gildan Distributor in Ghana. No size. Let's go and have a chat. Sweetheart, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well and yourself. Great. You're looking so <laughs> I like your outfit. Thank you. So who are you wearing today? I'm today wearing... On my on this seat is red carpet. So who are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing myself. Actually oh. high street shops uh, I bought it from. So yeah. I like your shoe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Anyway, I welcome you live on SBTV Africa. Today I'm here with a special lady. Mm. Uh, I'm in England. I'm in London. So I'm forced to speak English. Technical my way for speaking English. Uh, I'm forced to speak English. So welcome on board. Subscribe to our channel for our social media handles. It's SBTV Africa. Sweetheart, I welcome you once again. What's up, special lady? What's your real name? Uh, my real name is Elizabeth Amoa. Elizabeth Amoa. Yes, please. A.K.A. Special lady. Special. Why special? Well, I'm special because I'm born different. Mm. Um, so when I say I'm born different, I'm mm. born with a different anatomy, you mm. know, of a woman. So I have two wombs, two services, and two vagina canals. So that's why I call myself special. Anyway, uh, today is not the first time having you on my show. Of I course. think we've had a chat before. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Ghana by then, mm -hmm. so it was Skype, right? Yes, we did a Skype So today is one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one, yeah. Good. In real um, one. Let's get to know more. It may be probably it's the first time someone's mm -hmm. seen mm -hmm. you. I know you've done a lot of interviews, mm -hmm. but maybe today's the first time. Maybe somebody that maybe has he or, he or she has not seen you before yeah. seeing you. Can you tell us more into this double vagina thing and how it all came? Okay, so um, I was born in Ghana. Mm. And if I go way back from the age of six years old, I used to complain a lot with abdomen pain. Mm and a lot of recurrent thrush, mm. which is white, you know, that comes, you know, from um, a female mm. genital area. And it went on to, I uh, reached my puberty and I had a late uh, puberty. My periods were irregular. So there were a lot of symptoms that was pointing that there was something wrong somewhere. However, the doctors kept ignoring, or I would say they had no idea. Mm. So my concerns and plea were ignored on many, many occasions and for many years my adult when i reached my adulthood it was similar until uh, i persisted and persisted you know to seek i would say adequate medical intervention and it wasn't until i was 32 years old that they find out that i have a different type of womb and i was born with two wombs so then i had a surgery which is a, a keyhole surgery laparoscopy that's when they insert the camera in my womb to know that I also had two services and two vagina canals. And also, 
our severe endometriosis, which mm -hmm. is the lining of the womb outside the uterus. And obviously, in 10 years before that, I was diagnosed with fibroids. So um, this is how the journey was. As I said, a lot of complications, mm -hmm. a lot of, I would say, neglect and, you know, doctors ignoring or medical professionals ignoring my plea to get answers. And this is why, I mean, I, I started my advocacy and also came out to tell my story mm -hmm. for everyone to know that this condition that exists. You've been on um, a lot of media mm -hmm. platform or media houses, interviews here and they're coming out boldly to share this. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? It is worth it. And uh, the reason why it's worth it is a lot of people don't mm -hmm. know or have never heard that, you know, this condition exists, you know, which is utility deficits, mm -hmm. possessing two womb. Not every woman with two womb have two services or two vagina canals. Mm -hmm. Some have two womb, one service and one uh, vagina canal. I have the complete malformation, which is a two womb, two services and two vagina canals. Having this condition makes you prone to other reproductive health issues like endometriosis, fibrous species, ovarian cysts, and so on and so forth. And even, you know, being prone to miscarriages, stillbirth and premature delivery. So to me, coming out will let other women who are having these symptoms or signs to know maybe they do have you know this malformation but they are not aware it will also help medical professionals mm. to understand that if any patient present to their clinic with this kind of symptoms they would take it seriously and do further investigation like my case it took at least 30 32 years you know of my life for doctors to know that i was born different mm. so to me coming out is is worth it because it has helped some medical professionals and even patients or women and even help myself to understand who I am, my body, you know, to help me with the confidence. There are other women, not necessarily means they have my kind of womb, but they may have, let's say, body image issue. They might not feel comfortable in their body. They might feel they are different. Maybe it could be normal or medical condition or it could be the way they look in, you know, in the shape or figure. So if these women hear my story and the fact that I'm out there talking about unspoken topics. It will encourage and motivate them to, to feel comfortable and have that self-esteem to know that it doesn't matter how they look, you know, the kind of medical condition they have. They are special. They're born to, to, to make an impact on this earth. Or they should understand that however they look or whoever they are, they're still okay. They, they should accept it. And to me, obviously, it's not, it doesn't show on the outside. And even in the inside, the fact that I came out has enabled me to be the voice of the voiceless, you know, to be the voice for many women, many young girls. As I said, not necessarily means they have uterus deficits, but also any other medical condition or having body image. So it was extremely worth it, although the journey hasn't been easy. How does it feel uh, to be the first black woman globally mm -hmm. to share the story? Well... To me, it's kind of like a legacy, and um, I feel very happy and grateful, especially to all the media platforms, you know, that give me this opportunity, especially many times to bond different, you know, for, you know, for featuring my story and, you know, publishing it, and, and right now it's been to at least 100 countries globally, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful to all the international media platforms, or oh, I was in groups that came as well to give me this opportunity. Being the first black woman, um, it's a great achievement. As I said, it hasn't been easy, but someone has to start something. If I didn't come out, who would come out? Because mm. before I came out, there was a lady that has come out um, who was uh, American, a white young girl, Cassandra Blankson, if I remember her name correctly. And to me, I realized, hang on, this condition is there because on Facebook, there was a group of women with my kind of condition, and we are about at least 12 or 12,000 or 13,000 12, at least yeah and there are different other groups and none of them has come out apart from Cassandra when I came out so this is what made me realize that this thing is very unspoken mm. people are scared of stigma they're scared of society labeling they're scared of the backlash so I have to step out I have to take that bold step and that is what actually motivated me and encouraged me and I'm grateful and as I said it hasn't been easy you know, with all the backlash, the insults, I mean, the tears, you know, the cries, the sorrow. And at the same time, also the medical 
journey that I have to go through. Talking about insults, why are they insulting you? I don't understand. Well, is it because for you coming out to share? I personally is ignorant because they don't know. And obviously, sometimes when people don't know certain things, they think it's not real. Because mm. I used to get people saying, she's lying. Or, are you an animal? You're not real, you're an alien. That doesn't exist. Mm. And people relating me to pornography and all sorts. And to me, these things have made me a tough, you know, a tough skin. It's, it's given me that kind of strength and made me too bold. And funny enough, when I hear these comments nowadays, I just laugh. You know? It's funny, you know, people call me the Ghanaian woman with two vaginas. And I was like, wow. It gives me also the opportunity to educate them in terms of sexual, you know, sexual education and even reproductive itself, you know, education. Because people don't even know that vagina is not what they see on the outside. So to me, it's an opportunity to raise awareness on reproductive, you know, organs or reproductive system, you know, itself. So, um, yeah, the insults is there. I still get some. But right now, I don't really, you know, focus on it. And to me, it has made me a very strong and given me a lot of confidence and boldness to, to continue with this advocacy. Oh. What are some of the main objectives behind establishing the organization? So Special Lady um, Awareness was organized, obviously. So it was established by myself. And obviously, we are a team now. Um, we are a group of people that... The main objective was to raise awareness on these unspoken topics and also to give women and young girls the platform and kind of like the confidence to talk about topics that are not spoken, mm. topics that are seen as taboo, topics that people might not be comfortable to talk about. So as I said, not only reproductive aspects as well, it's also about the whole image, the whole body. Having, let's say, reproductive health, you do have symptoms from discharges to recurrent um, miscarriages to thrush to even mental you know uh, having anxiety depression so special lady is there to let them know that it doesn't matter what condition you have you have to persist and get early diagnosis in order to get you know the right medical care and support that you need in order to manage these symptoms and live happy and healthy because all these conditions and other challenges that we face being a woman born different or being a woman with you know fibrous or endometriosis or infertility issue or society you know labeling you or backlashing you it will affect you psychologically it can affect your career it can affect your relationships whether marriage or you know dating someone or family and friends so special lady is there to let these women feel special and at the same time we also help with um i would say uh healthcare units which is hospitals and doctors in order to provide uh the essential care to women with reproductive health issues and also educate you know students you know on menstruation and also mm -hmm. menstrual hygiene how to combat menstrual poverty and and also give opportunity to women and young girls who lack early diagnosis you know sometimes they might have financial difficulties in order to have um, uh, scans or, 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 or even surgeries or treatments. So this is the whole thing. And we've done a lot of work and I feel that it's not, we've, although we've done enough, but there is more to do. This is why Special Lady continue with this advocacy and we want other uh, international agencies and organizations to reach out so that we can work together, do a lot of collaborations, do a lot of work because a lot of women and young girls are suffering in silence. And recently, if you are aware, there is a lot of campaign going on for women with endometriosis. It takes no less than seven years for women to get diagnosis for endometriosis. And sometimes by the time they get this diagnosis, it's a bit too late. And therefore, this is why the advocacy must continue. This is why international agencies, you know, medical professionals, we all need to come on board so that these women and young girls can get early diagnosis and the right treatment that's supposed to be given to them. So what are, uh, what have uh, Special Lady Awareness done so far? Oh, we've done a lot. Uh, we mm -hmm. established our Special Lady in 2017. And from then, we, we've been visiting schools. I would say at least 12, 12 schools, which is SHS and GHS in Ghana. And also we've done vocational schools mm -hmm. and thousands of students have females have received sanitary towels and thousands both male and females have received education on reproductive health also menstrual hygiene mm -hmm. we've done donations to 37 mm -hmm. uh, military hospital in ghana uh, donating pallets of medical 
uh, supplies to women reproductive to diagnose reproductive health issues and also treatments and at the same time pediatric care we've also donated to a hospital in amasamai and recently even because i'm trying to go fast track because there's a lot of things we've done uh, just recently i was in ghana and the whole team we visited eastern region we visited five towns and we uh, we raised awareness on reproductive health the donations of sanitary towels essentials and also uh sanitary products i'll say we've, i've said that already and also visited all the leaders in the community uh to to raise awareness to let them know that you know um these women that are suffering in silence needs to feel special they need to come out and uh what else have we done in the uk um we've participated in events conferences local churches so we've done quite a few works that i would say and um so all those things that you mentioned donation you give to this you went here you did this do you have kind of like how do you get your support is it like you have people that fans you or how do you do it so obviously during all our um i would say during all our outreach projects we normally uh do go fund me which is not very easy the the funding is quite difficult mm. financially aspect we we really 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 you don't get you don't get support. a lot of support but mm. when it comes to materials like the sanitary products and also uh, sanitary i mean sorry essentials we do get uh, support from companies or individuals that feel like what we're doing you know is impacting you know the community but when it comes to financially it's, it's quite tough do you have some patrons or do you have some few people that they say yo we want to support you people some few people at the moment we don't helping. this is why we continue when we play to you know government agencies we play to international organizations to help us i mean i must say uh, I'll use this opportunity to say thank you to Advocates of World Health. They do support us with the medical supplies. But then when it comes to the shipping aspect, you know, that is also, especially the awareness have to raise money to do that. When it comes to moving the items to the, the uh, hospitals, we also have to raise money to do that. So uh, this is where the, 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 the issue is. When it comes to funding, it's quite tough, I would say. And with the COVID, it hasn't helped with that. But last year, we were still able to feed thousands of vulnerable people in Ghana. So somewhere, somehow, we're trying our best. And I believe if we do get the support and you know the funding that is needed, we will do more and more. Not only in Ghana, the whole world, because obviously this condition doesn't only affect Ghanaians or even Africans. It affects everyone. So I believe that with the right support, we will we'll be able to go globally and raise awareness on these unspoken topics. Has the organization achieved its goals? I won't say fully, yes, we have achieved some. Mm. The fact that now people believe and understand and know that utility diversity is real. People understand that it doesn't matter how you're born, you're different. Mm. People understand that um, you know, these unspoken topics have to be discussed. It shouldn't be a taboo or an elephant in the room. So that aspect, we have achieved a lot. But to me, there is more to do, as I said, more to do as going global, you know, letting the whole world know what we do and where we want to go. You know, a time will come. I want people to be comfortable to talk about this issue. I want medical professionals to understand these women, to guide them, give them the support, give the young girls support. You know, the girl child education. Do you believe that some young girls, you know, miss out school because they do not have access to sanitary towels? And these are all the topics and these are the issues that we tackle. So I want a time to come and it's a dream that every young girl will have access to sanitary towels. Every young girl will have access to the education of menstruation every young girl will have access to even education youth empowerment so what we do as i said it's not just reproductive aspect it's a whole you know uh, i would say girl child empowerment at the same time reproductive health and at the same time also um tackling unspoken topics and letting women know that it doesn't matter how they are born who they are where they come from, their social background, they are special and they want to make an impact. You've been on a lot of platforms, like I said earlier. Do you think your voice has been heard? I feel like it has been heard to some extent, but not mm. enough. The reason why not enough is whenever my story come out, there are still people there that feel like, oh, this is strange. Recently, I was on GBC. Mm. Over 109, no, it was 119 thousand people have seen the video within three four days 
And when you read the comments, there are still people who don't understand what you do with the offices. There are still people who don't even believe that this condition exists. So we, need, we, need more we need more awareness mm -hmm. in this. So although my voice has been heard by some people, I do not think that everybody understands the whole concept of the, you know, the advocacy. So there are still more work that especially the awareness needs to do. Wow. You being a woman that has double vagina, you always been saying this. I know the men will come and try. True or false? They worry you, eh? Men worry you, eh? Well, not only men, women even ask, oh, how, what, what do you mean by you have two see. vagina? Yes, they want to see. Mm. I think the reason being is a lot of people think vagina is what you see on the outside. Mm -hmm. They do not know that vagina is the hole that is seen in the, in, in the inside. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said it gives me the opportunity to explain to them that mm -hmm. when I'm naked, you know, I'm like any other woman, you see a V shape. However, as you, you know, I have one clitoris that every other woman. Mm -hmm. So as you enter, you know, obviously after where we urinate, you know, that hole that is inside there, mine is divided into two. So it's like the nose that there is like a flesh in the middle so yes i do have the left hole and the right hole so scientifically it's called two vaginas on the outside though i do have one normal vagina shape so how are we going to see it because now you have double vagina you alone know can see it you and your doctor <laughs> but me i will not see it a lot of people too ask the same thing what shows that you have, you have double vagina <laughs> well well, um, as I said, it's, it's in the inside. Uh -huh. So when in the inside, it's, it's divided into two. And oh, you are creating awareness? Yes. Okay, so how will one understand? But then uh, there are pictures out mm. there. When you Google, you will see what two vagina means. So mm. for me, it's like the vagina is two and it divide, it's divided into two. Then it leads to two services and two uh, womb, obviously. Mm. Um, when you look online, you will see, you will see that. But I know, I know what you're trying to aim it at because someone told me that what about if we scan you on live TV so that we will see. Of course, one day I will, I will, I will agree to having a live scan. Mm -hmm. However, as you know, you only see the images, you know, the, the scanning image. It doesn't mean you will see me real because mm -hmm. obviously the scan has to go inside or you will see the, the screen and it will show you mm -hmm. the two vaginas but i think it's something i need to take it on board and maybe have a live <laughs> yeah well, you need to do that maybe you do it on svtv africa when the time is up you call us when you are ready we'll go to the scan and uh, cover it live on svtv africa. that would be very that would be good easy. yes i think that would be good what are some of the challenges you face you've said a lot having all these things what are some of the challenges you face has somebody approached you saying i have the same thing or any family, mm -hmm, anybody mm -hmm. telling you all this thing? Yeah. So the challenges I faced is um, personally, and any woman out there mm. who is born with uterus deficits, we know we are prone to kidney diseases. Some women with my condition have one kidney. Mm. Fortunately for me, I have I have two kidney. Mm. Having said that, my kidney is not as healthy as most other women out there. Mm. So every year or two, I have to have kidney test done especially when my urine turn yellow is alarming because then i have to get test done i do get a lot of tests done for my ovaries my kidneys and everything so it's a yearly or annually i do have to get test done mm -hmm. when let's say i bleed in between periods obviously raise alarm not only because i have it with the i have um severe endometriosis and that too can lead to ovarian cysts and ovarian cysts can lead to ovarian cancer and These are all technical terms. Break it down, <laughs> So, <laughs> so obviously, so ovarian cysts is like a fluid sac mm. that is normally grows on the ovaries, mm. and endometriosis is the lining of the womb outside the uterus. So, let's say the the tissues that are supposed to perform in the womb they seen outside, and endometriosis can be confused as painful menstrual periods. But endometriosis pain is so severe that. Even if you take med uh, medication or painkillers, you will still be in pain. Sometimes you don't have to be on your pillow to have pain. It can spread to the lungs, you know, the kidneys, even to the brains. And the matrix is quite deadly. You when it so I said there is a lot of education and awareness that is being created nowadays. So imagine I have that, and that can also lead to infertility and other complications. I have it with the deficits, you know, and that to have its own complications. Mm -hmm. 
and I used to have ovarian cyst, but it's disappeared. And I have uterine fibroids. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that you have symptoms. So all that in one person, you can imagine. I had to then take the steps and, and change my way of eating. So I then stopped eating red meat. I don't eat sugar. I, you know, I cut down dairy. I hardly eat dairy. So it's a whole diet thing. Change your diet, change your lifestyle, shut out any distraction, anything that is negative because you need to have a positive mind. You know, you, you have to take care of yourself, your body. And this is what special lady does when we actually delivering talks. We talk about, you know, having that peace of mind, meditating, relaxing, even going to the spa, you know, cut, shutting out distraction, shutting out negativity, because all this matters. Any woman with this condition has to understand that you need to have a sound mind because going to hospitals, doing scans, you know, making sure you are okay, making sure any alarming thing you you know you, you you can catch it early and prevent further complications because my endometriosis is on my rectum it can spread it's also around my lower bowel my lower bowel so you can imagine i've already had six surgeries i was supposed to have a seventh one and glory be to god i didn't need a seventh because i'm getting well so these are the things that you know they are challenges the back of my mind i don't know what tomorrow will bring i can end up having kidney disease i can end up having ovarian cancer or cervical cancer any of the five you know gynae cancers i can have so these are the challenges having said that the fact that i'm taking good care of myself i'm eating the right food living a healthy life i will just go you know with the flow life is what you make use of it this is why i've chose to be the voice of the voiceless as long as i'm alive i will ensure that the advocacy is done and especially lady awareness in organization Will, will be there you know whether i'm alive or not because it's not just about me mm -hmm. it's a whole organization itself and it's aiming to go global to support women globally not only my african women when it comes to other women the next question that you said other women who have my condition yes i personally know five Ghanaian women that have my condition unfortunately for them they are not ready to come out mm -hmm. because of society stigma and stereotypes and, and, and believe me, it's not easy. It's not easy to come out and say you are born different. You know, you've read some of the comments. Even when you interview me, you read some of the comments. You even ask me, Elizabeth, how do you cope when people write these things on your wall or when you see them on social media or when you hear them on the TV, on the radio? To me, it is what it is. But the question is, how many women or young girls will be comfortable to, to face these things? Obviously, a time will come these women will be okay you know they will feel comfortable to come out but all will happen if the advocacy continue to be done this is what will give them the platform and the courage and the motivation tool for them to also publicly say yes we are born different we are special and it hasn't changed us because elizabeth amoa aka special lady came out and said she was born different and she is doing well so when it happens like this what are some of the things you need to do? Do you have to like kind of like some food you don't have to eat? You have to do surgery, like you said. I'm talking about the five people that you said they confined in you in Ghana. Are they having all these complications and all? Oh that? yes, uh, yes, they do have. You know, com even worse, two of them have never been able to conceive yet. And um, obviously, I I I guide them to the, the things that I did and how I, I had to take certain things in my own hands because those surgeries did not kill me. They actually made things worse. That's why I was on the seventh. And, and when I, when I took things in my hands as eating healthy, you know, stop eating red meat, stop eating sugar, you know, not taking a lot of sugar intake, sugary food and all that, I realized that I felt better. I realized that my symptoms reduced massively. Before, I couldn't sit more than two hours without having back pain or lower back pain. Now, I can sit for four, five hours, six hours with no pain. Before, I couldn't stand for four hours, but now I can stand and I'm fine. So, these are the things that I tell these women. I am not a doctor. I am not a nurse. I am just a reproductive health advocate. So, I actually will guide them according to the things that I have tried that has helped me. There are some natural things that you can use like ginger, you know, or African peppers, you can use green tea, lemon, you know, there are so many little, little things that you can use. They're very cheap, they're free. You don't need to have surgery all the time. Even you'll be surprised that 
my fibers hasn't grown more than 3.5 centimeters for many years the first time i was diagnosed fibers was in 2008 so now it hasn't gone you know bigger it's still the same size the reason being is because of the foods i eat there are other women that they can have fibers within a year it's just grown so big it's because they eat red meat because they eat sugar because they don't eat the healthy food so to me i use my life experience and journey to 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 educate these women and to give them that support that they need to take my kind of way not everyone they will work for but i have noticed that the majority it has been working for them and their symptoms to have reduced massively you happen to be in the uk you had a chance to do surgeries so those back home if they want to do surgery i guess it's going to be expensive to do those surgeries right? of course it is expensive so if you don't have the money forget it unfortunately when you live with reproductive health issues it's very costly keyhole surgery in ghana is from 15 i think 15,000 to 20,000 cities even a normal open cut surgery is 4,000 cities and you can imagine how many women can afford 4,000 cities and especially the awareness you know organization i've tried we've done our best last year we were able to give uh um how would you say with treatments and also uh, support to women to have uh, scans and those that needed surgeries to we've helped them do that but it is it is challenging you know there are a lot of them are still suffering in silence because they can't afford this is why we say we play to international organizations to work with us to provide these women that you know lack financially to get access to you know adequate medical intervention so the issue is there and it's a massive issue not only in ghana even in the uk there are some women who are still having late diagnosis like myself i did have late diagnosis i grew up in france in the uk and i had late diagnosis and because of the late diagnosis it resulted in a lot of complications and into the unnecessary surgeries the six surgeries were not necessary because if i did have an early diagnosis all these surgeries wouldn't have what happened so yes you know we it's something that the I would say the whole world, everyone, it's a collective effort. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to come on board and to support women and young girls that have these sy symptoms. You know, not necessarily means they have uterine deficits. As I said, it could be any other, you know, reproductive health issues. Courses. What courses? Do so, two room, two services, two vaginal mm -hmm. canals. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were born with. So, basically, mm -hmm. the way it happens is when a woman is pregnant with a female mm -hmm. baby or mm -hmm. child, there is always two little tubes that normally join together to form a big organ called the, the womb uterus. Okay. In my case, or women with my condition, our cases, those two little tubes do not join. They fail to join together. Therefore, the baby, which is the fetus, will then be born with two wombs, sometimes two services, and rarely, not all the time, which is, I say, one in a million, that one, because people confuse three no one in three thousand or three thousand fifty women five hundred women so they have two room it doesn't necessarily mean they've got two services it doesn't mean it does not necessarily mean they've got two vagina canals as well but very rarely some of them also born with two vagina canal which is mm -hmm. the complete malformation so it happens at the formation of the female um i would say uh, reproductive organ basically yes so you are born with it anyway um if somebody wants to contact you, your social media handles, your phone number, mm -hmm. maybe somebody's watching us, they want to support your organization and mm -hmm. all that. So my social media handles mm -hmm. um, on Instagram is at Special Lady Awareness mm -hmm. and on Facebook is Special Lady Awareness, on YouTube Special Lady Awareness. My website which is www.specialladyawareness.com and my last message out there What to about your number? Oh, special lady, you need to have a business number. You don't have it because you are scared of putting your 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 main line board. Like you yourself will check. So I see you know, if I put my number there, I do get a lot of people uh, messaging. So men, how how do men propose to you a lot and eh? they come worry you and all that? I know you are married or you are not married. I am married, yes. But still yes. men want to come on board. Do you tell them you are married? I mean I do tell them I'm married. But they yes. still want to. What do they want? I think it's the curiosity of it when they hear that you do have 
two vitamins and two services and two vagina canals some of them just want to find out whether it's real what is it or uh, how is it like but well i don't think it's only because of that i think it's just people trying their luck and maybe they think i'm single but i am married please so my last message to anyone watching me out there whether you're a male or female if you're a male if you do have any sister any friend any wife yeah. any child a daughter mm -hmm. and uh, they have you know mm -hmm. symptoms like yeah. recurrent uh, thrush you know they do have late diagnosis or they do have uh, sorry late, mm -hmm. late menstrual periods or their menstrual menstruation is heavy or you know they're always in pain mm -hmm. you know you have to support them you have to encourage them you have to let them seek you know early diagnosis because you never know it might not just be Yes, um, a menstrual period or menstrual, sorry, heavy menstrual pain or uh, heavy bleeding. And also to the young girls out there or women watching me, why well, I want to say that, you know, you need to speak up. You need to seek early diagnosis. It doesn't matter how, you know, how you were born, what kind of condition you have, how you feel. You are special. Yes, going through these kind of conditions or even body image, feeling that you're not adequate, it's normal. It's normal to feel low with yourself because seeing changes in your body or maybe being diagnosed with infertility or being diagnosed with fibrous or mm. any other reproductive health issues. It's normal to feel down. But remember, you are not alone. And, you know, this is why Special Lady Awareness Organization is there. You can always reach out to us and you can, you know, we can help you through the journey and also help you to get support. And also, you know, I mean, just be part of the family. Because it's something that you can't change who you are. I'm born special. And trust me, um, to me, being born different is, is, is a blessing instead of people seeing as a case. So speak up, seek early diagnose, and remember, you are special and born to make an impact. Thank you so much, Special Lady, for coming on the show, SVTV Africa. Thank you. Thank you tua, for having tua, me. Tua, 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 tua.